Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me once again. Today I'm going to be making these delicious braised oxtails. This is the perfect comfort food. So if you're looking for a nice, soulful Sunday dish, you might wanna stay tuned. I would like to say it's easy, I'm hungry, so let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, let's go ahead and jump right into it. First things first, off camera, I went ahead and made sure I cleaned my oxtails. This is absolutely imperative. I clean my oxtails with like lemon lime water. I will rub the lemons and limes on the oxtails and then I'll let them soak for five minutes and I repeat that a second time. Some people choose to use uh, white vinegar to clean their oxtails and that is totally fine as well. Do you boo boo, just make sure you clean those oxtails. Now onto the seasonings. For my seasonings, I used onion powder, garlic powder, pepper, some salt, some Jamaican allspice, which you can find at pretty much every grocery store, and sasson. I use just one pack of the orange pack of the sasson. Um, depending on the number of oxtails is how much seasoning you will need. I actually had two and a half pounds, and as you can see, some of the bones that I have are pretty large. So make sure you season yours accordingly, but of course, I will leave my measurements down in the description box below. Okay, so here is a quick tip. I use light brown sugar. I did not have any browning. I'm still on the West Coast, so I don't have all the ingredients that I typically would have. But I read that you can use the brown sugar to get that same deep, dark color that we know and love. So I use about a tablespoon of this. I don't want sweet oxtails, but I do want that rich color. Naturally, I'm going to use my hands to mix that brown sugar around along with all the additional seasonings. And once done, this is what your oxtails should look like. Now that my oxtails have all of their seasoning, I'm gonna go ahead and add in some additional veggies that I want to marinate my uh, oxtails with. So I have two habaneros, which I have thinly sliced. I did not remove the seeds, so feel free to do so. I use five large garlic cloves that I just roughly chopped. I'm using a half of a large yellow onion. I, I just diced that up. And I use one whole red pepper. I also diced that up. Um, and to this, I'm going to be adding in just a couple of sprigs of fresh thyme. Once you have everything mixed together, this is what your oxtail should look like. I'm going to simply cover my oxtails with some saran wrap, and I'm gonna leave these in the refrigerator to marinate overnight before it's time to get cooking. So I have taken my oxtails out of the refrigerator and I let them get to room temperature for about 45 minutes to an hour. Reason being is because I don't want my meat to tense up. For example, if you are hot and someone is cold and they decide to touch you, you're gonna be like, whoa, why you touch me? Your hands is cold and you're gonna tense up, right? Same thing happens with your meat. So let it come to room temperature before braising it. <laughs> Now it is le time to le braise le um, beef. So I have a nice hot pan here um, and I just put some olive oil in it. You can certainly use canola oil, but I like to use olive oil most often. I'm going to put my oxtails in here in batches because I do not want to overcrowd the pan. Be sure not to overcrowd the pan. It's gonna cause your meat to boil. And what we're looking for right here is a nice clean sear. Promise you're not gonna burn your meat. Um, again, as you see, I have some big pieces as well as some small pieces. So I'm going to be braising these oxtails for about two to three minutes on each side. Just to give you an idea of what the meat will look like so you'll know it's time to turn is right here. The meat by no means is burnt, but we definitely want to get some nice braisedness on that uh, oxtail. Yes, I made that word up, braisedness. Um, this just creates and adds so much more flavor to your oxtails. I have officially cooked all of my oxtails and this is what they should look like once done. Okay, you see here all the delicious braised bits remaining from those oxtails. To that, I'm going to pour in the peppers, the onions, the garlic that we used in that marinade, and even that additional remaining liquid from the oxtails, we wanna to toss that in as well. That's gonna to help pull up 
some of those bits and pieces uh, from braising of those oxtails. Now get yourselves a wooden, a wooden spoon so you don't scrape the bottom of your pan up too, too, too much. But you want to use that and you're just going to scrape and scrub and get all those delicious bits of flavor, not burntness, right off the bottom of your pan. Continuing the sauce creation process we're going to go ahead and add in some tomato paste i'm using i want to say this was about a 16 ounce uh you know the little baby containers of tomato paste we're going to just add that in there tomato paste is also an agent that's going to give you some flavor but it's also going to allow your gravy to be pretty thick so same thing with this we are going to make sure that we are still just scraping up all those delicious bits and pieces and you'll even see here that a lot of what you saw before has already been removed so once the tomato paste has gotten a chance to meet the red peppers and the onions and the garlic and become friends you're going to go ahead and add in some beef stock about 16 ounces or depending on how many oxtails you're making truth be told your girl used chicken stock i ain't had no beef stock so fight me you can certainly use water and beef bouillon cubes but the way to go is to use beef stock um, the second tip to get that delicious dark color is to add soy sauce because I did not have brownie. So I added a tablespoon of some light soy sauce and I'm going to be adding in about three fourths cups of some red wine. Now I use Cabernet Sauvignon, but you know, choose what you want. Just don't choose nothing sweet. Give this a stir and you're good to go. And now that everybody is happy, everyone is the good old friend of the friend and everyone's ready to get on in i added just one large large i mean this thing was huge green onion and i'm going to just add in all of my oxtails now when you put the oxtails in the pot be sure to try to make sure they're covered that's why i say your ratio of liquid might be a little bit di little bit different from mine um, but mine is with two and a half bones and i do have some pretty large bones but make sure your oxtails get completely submerged in that liquid as you can see here, I've already gone ahead and pushed more of the bones down. Now go ahead and pop in two habanero peppers. I don't have scotch bonnet, so that's typically what you would use for this, but habanero works just fine. And about four more sprigs of fresh thyme. Give these oxtails another final stir. Put that lid on and let these babies cook on low for the next three to four hours. Now, ain't nobody tell y'all these oxtails was going to take y'all just a little bit of time. I said be patient. But when you are done, do you see this oxtail? Excuse the smoke. It's me. I call this flavor precipitation, condensation, evaporation of the flavors because it's all up in the camera and I didn't know how to get rid of it. But do you see these bones? Do you see these delicious, that dark gravy? That dark gravy? with brown sugar and soy sauce, y'all. No brownie was used in the cooking of these oxtails. Look, let's just go ahead and plate this bad boy on up, please. Look at that. I just made mine with some coconut rice and some cabbage and you know what I'm saying? It was a, it was a good day. It was a good day to me. And there you have it. A simple recipe for some delicious oxtails. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you will enjoy making this recipe. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment below. And until next time, thank you again for joining me, Sierra Peace.